Hey, welcome to Mono Network, and today we're going to talk about the laws of friction and motorcycle traction. The question of motorcycle traction is hot and highly debatable topic among riders. Some say the bigger the tire, the better it is for traction. Others say it is the weight of the bike and the condition of the tire that makes the bike stick to the asphalt. Although both are partially right, I believe it is necessary to provide you with a profound explanation as to what traction is and how exactly does it work. So let's get down to it. There are two laws of friction. The first states that the friction between two surfaces is proportional to the force pressing one to the other. In other words, the force is the weight of a motorcycle pressing the tire into the pavement. And proportional practically means that the heavier the motorcycle is, the greater pressing force would be. Easy, right? Well, not so fast. The second law of friction states that the friction is independent of the contact area. To put it simply, imagine you put a brick on a table and investigate how much force it takes to get the brick sliding. You screw an eye bolt into the brick, run a line from the eye bolt to a pulley on the edge of the table, and then attach weights to the end of the line. You add weight until the brick starts to slide. Got it? Good. So in a nutshell, the second law states that friction doesn't depend on the contact area. Whether the brick sits on the larger side or on the smaller side, the friction remains the same. Now we need to talk about something called tire load sensitivity. The theory states that the coefficient of friction decreases slightly as load on the tire increases. In other words, if you replace a rider who weighs 170 pounds with a dude who weighs 340 pounds, you will double the traction. Well, it's almost double, but not quite. It is important to understand, though, that the increase in traction doesn't happen because the contact patch has increased, but rather due to increase in the weight pressing the tire down into the pavement. So if we take our 170 pound rider and upgrade his tires to something beefier, the traction unfortunately won't increase as the weight pressing down on the tires will remain the same. Now since we understand the two laws of friction as well as the tire load sensitivity theory, let's see how these laws are applicable in real life scenarios. According to the first law, the traction of the tire on the road surface increases as the weight increases. That is exactly the reason why front brake rotors are so much bigger in the front than in the back. And that's both on cars and motorcycles. Reason being that when you slam on the brakes, the weight transfers forward thereby increasing the traction. The opposite effect happens in the back. You slam on the brakes, weight shifts forward, thereby making the tail section much lighter, which means less weight and less traction. Now, the second law states that the friction is independent of the contact area. The most common understanding among the riders is that there is much less traction when motorcycle is leaned over rather than straight up. Some say it happens due to the tiny size of the contact patch of the motorcycle tire, and more you lean, less rubber there is to ride on. Well, not quite. The motorcycle tire is round, which means that the amount of rubber is still going to be the same whether the motorcycle is straight up or leaned over. Then why does the motorcycle have less traction in the corner? We all know that if you're leaned over and you apply too much brake or too much throttle, the bike will slide and you will fall. Same applies to sudden disruptions, such as chopping the throttle for instance. The reason for all that is the amount of traction available to the rider to be utilized. The traction has to be shared between the various users of traction, which are acceleration, braking, turning, and reverse. First three users are quite self-explanatory. The reverse represents the remaining traction that we work with in case of emergency, such as braking for an unexpected obstacle or coming into the corner too fast. When you lean over, the turning section will expand to more than three quarters of a circle. The remaining 0.8 of a quarter will be shared between acceleration, braking, and reverse. So now you know that if you grab a handful of throttle or brake, you will exceed the available traction and either low side or high side. Therefore, make sure that you remember about these laws and proportions when you go out riding. That might just save you and your beloved bike. To finalize, you might be wondering, so what is it exactly that influences the traction if it isn't the size of the tire? Well, to put it simply, it is the coefficient of friction between two surfaces. If you want more traction, then you should use the tire with a stickier compound. Generally, the stickier compound is softer and will wear out much faster than, say, a touring-oriented tire. Also, the stickier tires can be bigger in size. Why? It is not because they will have greater contact patch for the road, but because the bigger tire can absorb and dissipate heat better than the skinnier tire, which will overheat and become quite slippery. Think of any MotoGP race when they start on skinnier rain tires to get more traction and resist hydroplaning, but then have to switch to beefier dry tires because the bikes become a lot more unstable due to the heat, not to mention the absurd wear of tire. So make sure to choose the tires carefully, taking into consideration the climate of the area you live in. 
If you liked today's video, make sure to smack that like button, give us thumbs up, and subscribe to Moto Network for more Moto content. Also, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Links in the description. Until then, see you next time. Ducati is an Italian motorcycle manufacturer known for sport bikes and street bikes using